The Israelites who left Egypt journeyed through the wilderness to enter the promised land. The distance from Cairo, Egypt to Tel Aviv, Israel is about 400 kilometers, roughly 250 miles. If a person walks normally, it would take about two weeks to cover that distance. Considering the pace of children, women, and the elderly, it would have taken the Israelites, said to number between three to four million, about a month to reach the promised land. However, in reality, it took them 40 years to enter the promised land. This was because the Israelites did not believe in God. Although Moses believed in God, he did not enter the promised land. This time, I would like to explore why the Israelites and Moses could not enter the promised land. The Israelites were commanded by God to go see the promised land about a year after leaving Egypt. During the reconnaissance of the promised land, only Joshua from the tribe of Ephraim and Caleb from the tribe of Judah claimed they could defeat the Anakites. Joshua's original name was Hosea. Hosea means salvation, while Joshua means the Lord is salvation. It seemed that the name salvation alone was not sufficient for Joshua, who was later appointed as Moses' successor. The ones who went to spy on the promised land were tribal leaders representing their respective tribes. The reconnaissance lasted 40 days. These 40 days became an issue. The leaders, who did not trust in the promised land on judged based on appearances, were condemned to death, and the 40 days were counted as 40 years of wandering. Even the day after the punishment was pronounced, they disobeyed the Lord's command not to go up the mountain and went up the mountain. The Israelites who had left Egypt still retained much of their old way of life. They thought it would be better to be slaves in Egypt than to die fighting giants. This was because, even as slaves, they did not have to worry about food. Starting a new life, finding places to live, and cultivating land in the promised land was a significant challenge. They had already forgotten how desperately they had sought salvation from God while they were in Egypt. The Israelite reconnaissance team saw that giants inhabited the promised land. The people with heights as tall as cedars were likely the Anakites, whom Joshua and the reconnaissance team first encountered when the Israelites entered the promised land of Canaan. Furthermore, the book of Numbers mentions the Nephilim, giants who existed during Noah's time and were the clan from which Goliath descended. Today, the country with the tallest average height is said to be the Netherlands, where the average height for men is 181.7 centimeters, which might make it seem like a land of giants to people from surrounding countries. The Nephilim were even taller than the Dutch, with Goliath's height being recorded as six cubits in a span, reaching about three meters. Even if Goliath was the tallest, it can be estimated that the Anakite Nephilim were at least over two meters tall. Which explains why all the Israelites, except Joshua, were afraid. Seeing giants in the Promised Land caused a split in opinion among the Israelite reconnaissance team. One group said, we cannot defeat the giants let's return to Egypt immediately. While the other opinion was, we can defeat the giants let's go to the Promised Land. Joshua and Caleb were the ones who voiced this second opinion. The last date mentioned before the reconnaissance is in Numbers 10, which says, the 20th day of the second month of the second year. Only two years had passed since the Israelites left Egypt. Afterward, they advanced from Kibroth Hatava to Hazaroth and arrived at the wilderness of Paran. Originally, the promised land that Joshua and the others had spied on was supposed to be given by the Lord and defeating the Anakites would lead to a happy ending. However, the Israelites were terrified of the giants in the Promised Land, and even started saying they wanted to appoint another leader and return to Egypt. This murmuring, right before entering the Promised Land, angered the Lord. As a result, the Israelites had to wander in the wilderness for another 38 years. Numbers 1434. For 40 days you explored the land, one year for each day. You will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. The Israelites had to bear their sins for 40 years, counting one year for each of the 40 days Joshua and Caleb spent spying. This was because they lacked trust in the Lord. Their sin was punished for their lack of faith, and the Lord took a stern attitude toward those without faith. 
The Israelites, after leaving Egypt, quickly faced problems with food and water. They immediately voiced their complaints to Moses, saying, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? Was it to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? In response, Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. God answered, I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. This was the first incident involving water. At this time, God stood before Moses, and when Moses struck the rock, water came out of it. This event was vividly remembered by both the Israelites and Moses. The people named the place Meribah because the Israelites quarreled, and Meribah means quarreling. They also tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The Israelites arrived at a place called Kadesh and camped there. However, there was no water. Once again, the people complained to Moses, saying, If only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Why did you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness, that we and our livestock should die here? The Bible records, Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. However, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites. You will not bring this community into the land I give them. Because of this incident, both Moses and Aaron were unable to enter the promised land, despite being so close. God always sees into the hearts of people. The cries of the Israelites in Egypt to the Lord were likely genuine. However, the Israelites also had a problem in that, despite God's goodness. They were constantly ungrateful and complained incessantly. It is true that the Lord saw Israel's suffering, took pity on them, and freed them after 400 years of slavery. But it is also true that when they saw the giants in the Promised Land, they were astonished and lost hope. To them, what they saw with their eyes was everything. Only Joshua and Caleb looked at the Anakites with faith. Additionally, the leader of the people, Moses, gradually began to develop a sense of pride. The Lord commanded, Take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. Striking the rock twice was different from what was commanded. In fact, shortly after leaving Egypt, a similar incident occurred. In Exodus 17, strike the rock, and water will come out of it, the event at the rock of Horeb. This time, about 40 years had passed since that incident, the first generation had died, and the second generation was about to enter the promised land. However, they were repeating the sins of their parents. Over those 40 years, Moses' attitude had changed. He failed to listen carefully to the Lord's words and, instead of following God's instructions, he struck the rock as he had done before. The Lord did not command him to strike the rock, let alone twice. The first time at Horeb, it was only once. This time, he struck it twice on his own accord. When Moses reached the limit of his ability to listen to the Lord, it was announced that he would not enter the promised land. In Numbers 20:12, it says, You did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites. Moses had become prideful over time. This concludes the examination of those who could not enter the promised land. Thank you for watching until the end. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel.